to say good evening everyone and welcome everyone to this meeting of the local Uh, and I do um, I beg your pardon, all those who prefer me to be speaking through a microphone, and I do understand it. So I'd like to say welcome to everybody to this meeting of the Milton Road Local Liaison Forum. And before we commence the uh, agenda, there are several... several, several several matters that I would like to address. First is that you may see that there's a different lineup here, and this is because of the boundary changes. So that the only changes are that there are county councillors here from Arbury and from Castle. Because the county boundaries have altered, Castle now comes down including Mitchell's Corner, and also Chesterton Community College, and Arbury commences from Gilbert Road, along Milton Road, to Ashen Road, and takes in the Presbytery at the church behind the uh, library, and goes up to Carlton Way. So therefore, I am here for Arbury, and my colleague Claire Richards is here for Castle. Um, and also before we commence the meeting proper, everybody will introduce themselves and there is also another change that um, I'd like to actually welcome Councillor Anna Bradner because she's now on the County Council whereas she was a District Councillor and co-opted in that capacity. She's here as a District Councillor. Yes. Still, yes, yes, absolutely. But I'm just saying congratulations mm. that she's now a County Councillor. Um, the other issue that's been drawn to my attention is that item one on the agenda is the election of chairperson and vice deputy, or vice or deputy chair if required. And our advice from Michelle Rowe, who is the Democratic Services Officer at the county, is that we do not at this stage need to do this election because she's, her advice is that I can remain in the chair quite legitimately and my colleague Councillor Jerry Bird can remain in the vice or deputy chair legitimately because of the way that the rules operate at this stage. If anybody wants clarification on that, then I can actually email anybody who wishes absolute clarification on that, what the rule is and uh, episode and verse. So without further ado, I will hand over to our colleagues on the right to come along so that everybody here is acquainted with who is on this side of the table. I'll have to pass, I'll have to pass the mic down. Charles Nesbitt, Chair of Milton Road Residence Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael Page, Chair of Hearst Commons <coughs> Residence Association. Michael Baum, a lower form of life in Old Chesterton <laughs> <laughs> Residence Association. Are you saying about Chesterton? Uh, Ian Manning, County Councillor for the New Chesterton Ward. <coughs> Ruth Yule, Democratic Services Officer, clerking the meeting. Um, Jocelyn Scott, Councillor for Arbury. And very sorry to see West Chesterton go in the county terms. I have enjoyed representing West Chesterton, as I will of course enjoy representing Arbury. Councillor Jerry Bird for East Chesterton. Mike Summer, City Councillor of West Chesterton. Lisa Meschini, County Councillor of King's Edges. Chair Richards, County Councillor of Castle. Martin Smart, City Councillor of King's Edges. Yes, so uh, welcome Councillor Bradman, yes. Um, I've already advised that you're now a County Councillor also. Um, I also have to give apologies for Councillor Kevin Price and Councillor Peter Saris. 
Councillor Kevin Price will be along later, and Councillor Peter Serres has another engagement. He's taking care of a seminar speaker, and that is an arrangement that was entered into some considerable time ago. I also realise I should explain that the city boundaries are still the same as they were, and therefore we have councillors from East and West Chesterton, and no city councillor here from Castle, and no city councillor here from Arbury, because we're operating on the city council boundaries, which um, involve Milton Road, and the county council boundaries, which involve Milton Road. Now, the minutes of the previous meeting are matters arising. Are there any issues arising from the minutes of the previous meeting? They have been distributed. Yes, I, I could see no difficulty. Does anybody have any issue to raise? I was asking, what date are those minutes? We shall have a look at the pictures. Monday, the 8th of December. Yes, the 8th of December. Was, was that your last meeting? As far as I'm aware, it's our last meeting, yes, um, Mr Taylor. I, I, I was not at another meeting of the local liaison forum. And if they come. Yeah, yeah. I, I do apologise. I'm really sorry. I can only apologise that, yes, we had another local liaison forum meeting, which was a local liaison forum meeting to which everybody was invited. And at that local liaison forum meeting, we re-approved the resolutions that we had passed on the 8th of December. And um, the reason that we did that was because it was believed that because at that meeting of the 8th of December there had been minor amendments made, it was preferable to come back and to ensure that we all agreed that the amendments that had been made on that occasion were properly recorded so that they could go forward to the City Deal Assembly and the City Deal Board in a form that we had formally approved. So, we did have that extra meeting, and I regret that the minutes uh, do not appear to be here, but at the, the <coughs> meeting that we will have in the future, we will make sure that those minutes are here, and we will approve them at the time that we approve the minutes from this one. And now we move to public questions. So, are there any questions from members of the public that people would like? Yes. Now, I do have to apologise, there is no roving microphone, so that if you would like to row to this microphone <laughs> and speak to this microphone, I'm afraid that that's maybe the best solution, so that everybody can hear, and we just apologise for, for this. Um, I would like to know why the City Deal meetings have been delayed until July, when everyone's on holiday. Thank you. Uh, my understanding is that the city deal meeting, which was to take the city deal meetings of the assembly and the board, which were to take place in June, have been transferred into July by reason of the general election and the fact that it was considered appropriate that this be done at a time when there was a general election pending and it would be preferable not to be holding those meetings at this time. Now, if, there's, if people wish to have any further um, explanation than that which I have given, I am very happy to pass this on to Councillor Herbert and he would personally respond to this question if that is wished. Yes, Councillor Manning. Um, I think it would be useful, I think, to get an explanation of behind the decision. I mean, I appreciate you can't necessarily give it now, but I don't see the relevance of general election to a local liaison board and it doesn't affect those or anything. So if we can get an explanation uh, in writing. Um, well... Sorry, Chair, that wasn't the question, Ian. Uh, the question was about the City Deal Assembly and Board, which had been um, today. 
case from, from June, not yeah. the local liaison form. Okay, so you have the same. Still applies. Um, I'll convey this question to um, Councillor Herbert and then what um, well, I, I will seek his advice as to the way that he would uh, wish to respond to this question. I can't speak for him, but I can put the question to him. Any further public questions, please? Yes, please come forward. <laughs> Maybe, but perhaps to, if people would like, if they would like to ask a question, if they can line up, here and then come this way to the microphone, then it means it'll be quicker rather than me having to indicate and say, please come up. Just a quick supplementary to that, and uh, Edward Lee from Smart Cambridge Transport. Um, could Edward Lee, um, could Councillor Herbert uh, also justify expanding the agenda for the July meeting to include the entire agenda of the June and July meetings? Because that now means that Hilton Road, Histon Road, Camborne, Cambridge, and the city centre will all be considered at one meeting. And it seems completely unreasonable to consider public questions on all of those subjects and to give true deliberation on all of those um, uh, those particular projects at one meeting. Thank you. I'm sorely tempted to say that uh, the Milton Road item on the agenda will certainly. Uh, take some time because we'll make sure that it does. However, I realise also that the other items on the agenda are important to Cambridge as a whole and to Cambridgeshire and to the people involved. So we'll ask Councillor Herbert um, that question too. Uh, this is not a question. I'm afraid it's a comment, but it's also taking up the issue. Where's the mic? Do you want to come forward to the oh, microphone so we can hear you? If the election goes as expected, we may have two years of ranking. It may be that our national agenda will completely change. So I suggest that while we listen to um, all the things that you have to say, it may be that some of those will be made redundant because it may be that the proposed money is to be available will have to be spent in different ways. It may be that the county consideration of uh, new roads and things may have to be slightly different if our exports are going on, have to go elsewhere and so on. And it may be um, that uh, you know, there's just a huge change in priorities. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I expect nobody can speculate as to the outcome of the election and all I would say is that very often bureaucratic wheels simply do roll on and perhaps that may occur in this instance but we are unable to speculate. So any further questions? Yes, thank you. Please come to the microphone so that everybody can hear. Thank you. Uh, is there any possibility that the outcome of the general election will have a major impact on financing the city deal? Thank you. Um, again, it's a question that's speculative in terms of what will happen on the 8th of, of June. And um, I, I'm obviously unable to answer this. I wouldn't assume that any of my colleagues can, but perhaps... Um, a, a, Councillor Herbert may be willing to speculate. So we'll put that to him as well. Um, any further questions? Yes. <coughs> Grant Cox, House Park Avenue. I'm sorry, Councillor Scott. Um, the question was not speculative. It asked if there was any possibility that in cover includes all outcomes of the election. I think the relevant point to that question, I understand why people are asking it, is the city deal has already been signed. Thank you. 
Uh, are there any further questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, so Cambridge City Council recently um, ruled that these um, local liaison forum meetings count as formal council meetings for the purposes of councillors not losing their seats when they're absent for um, six months. So I'd like to ask if the city deal and if the panel themselves um, agree with that determination. Um, and find, I'd like to suggest we find out on what basis um, that was done. My interest is in um, getting the papers um, for these meetings and getting the rights of um, access and to report on, on, on these meetings. Um, because we haven't had, um, for example today, um, details of the, essentially the papers and the presentation in advance which would have enabled us to um, think about it beforehand and to come tonight and um, for councillors um, and for members of the public to be able to ask more informed questions than we'll be able to um, straight after the pre presentation. Uh, the fact is it's open to any local authority to decide whether a meeting will count as a public duty for the purposes of paying allowances to councillors. They have to make that a determination when the matter that's being considered is not one of the statutory responsibilities of that particular authority. So the City Council has quite legitimately done that to enable its councillors to be able to claim legitimate expenses incurred while attending these meetings. I agree with Michael's point, but I think Richard's, um, what we're just getting at is the publication of the papers in advance and making these meetings more open. It definitely does need to improve, and especially if the city council is endorsing it. Um, it. This isn't a party political point, by the way, because I'm the vice chair of the, well, I guess, too excited, um, because I'm vice chair of the Chisholm Trail local liaison forum, and I found out today via an email from City Deal that that's been put back. Uh, I wasn't consulted as the vice chair, and the chair wasn't consulted, so I don't know to say why. Um, it does need to be improved, especially in the councils. Because the, the point here is that we all give up quite a lot of our time, whether we're residents association people or whether we're councillors, to get to attend these meetings and block out bits of our diaries. If those meetings can suddenly get moved, potentially it affects whether we get to stay on the council, it affects our attendances. Um, more than anything, as much as it affects the ability of residents to attend them. So I think I, I would ask, um, if we could get, you know, something from this forum just to state that they do need to be more prompt about publishing and more prompt and more and better explanations of when they are rearranged. I mean, these are decisions the local liaison forum takes to rearrange a meeting by the chair and vice chair, not decisions that some autonomous thing in the city deal takes. So I would hope that um, my colleagues would support me and, and, and back up Richard's point. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yes, um, everybody on this the panel here seems to be of the same view. Um, right. So we'll have to ensure that that is what happens in the future. Any further questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, this is a question I, I um, did submit um, previously when the panel were discussing the do optimum proposals, and it's just a question on the details there. Um, so why did the um, panel not support closing the um, junction between Highworth Avenue and Milton Road to motor traffic? Um, why did you uh, support keeping that open? Um, perhaps um, would one of the residents' association representatives like to answer the question? I'm quite happy to field that one. It's simply because at the uh, discussion groups that we had in the run-up to formulating those ideas, the overwhelming majority were not in favour of that closure. It just doesn't make any sense to those of us who live here and uh, actually have need to access Highworth Avenue without having to go around those mothers to get there. Um, further questions? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Could I make a point that as a resident of Highworth Avenue, the alternative to coming out of the roundabout is that one would come out um, onto Arbury Road, and that junction is quite blind and quite difficult. So I think, as um, has been said here, the balance was that to get a well-defined roundabout, 
and uh, I think the term the Dutch star roundabout has been used, to get a well-designed roundabout was preferable to having a lot of motor traffic coming out onto Arbury Road. Thank you. Um, so, any further questions, or are we exhausted the, the questions? Do I count as a member of the public? To ask? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, no, well, I mean, I? certainly, if you wish to ask a question, yes, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Um, I'd would be grateful if you would find out what the relationship is going to be between the city deal and the mayor, and who has overall charge of transport. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm not sure whether uh, the relationship has been worked out yet. And I mean, the mayor's only just been appointed and the uh, devolved authority has been meeting. But the, they're having to, I expect, work out where they stand. That is the mayor and the city deal. And they'll have to do it together. But I'll put that to Councillor Herbert also, I think. Um, yeah, the, the conversations with the government about setting up the devolution deal made it very um, clear that um, the city deal and the devolution were totally separate entities and would stay separate for yeah. certainly the foreseeable future. Um, who knows when life will change, but certainly they are separate entities. Um, but of course it is true that the mayor has transport within, it is he, his forefront. He, he does have transport. Yeah, but not yeah. No, but he has transport within his portfolio. Yes. I'm simply drawing attention to the fact that the question is not this um, misput, because the mayor does have transport within his portfolio, which surely has some relevance, one would imagine as the question it did, and as I imagine too. But any more questions? My question is about mitigation measures. Uh, for when the work eventually starts on Milton Road, uh, what kind of mitigation measures has the city deal considered or made when the road work starts to prevent gridlock in the whole of North Cambridge. Um, does one of the officers wish to respond to that or will there be a response in the course of the presentation? In the presentation, right, we'll, we'll keep that on, on board. Um, any, any further questions from the public or from our colleagues here? No. Right. Well then, um, we'll move to the next item, which is the Chair's update. Simply, I do want to update in very simple terms, and, and that is that my update is to this, um, is as follows. It was considered that it was vital to have this meeting on the 9th of May, because there had originally been a proposal that the resolutions of the Local Liaison Forum for Milton Road would go to the City Deal Assembly and the City Deal Board in March. And that then was altered. And there was, as is understandable, some disquiet being expressed at that delay. And all I can say is that in my assessment, it was a positive delay in that the delay was caused because it was considered that there had to be more modelling based on the due optimum proposal and therefore I would believe that that would be a positive rather than a negative delay and it was better not to go to the Assembly and the Board with our due optimum not having been modelled to the extent that it can now be done because of the delay from March until the present time. So uh, that's the reason to holding the meeting now, to A, inform 
everybody that that was the reason for the delay and B, to have now an update from the officers when they can tell us all just exactly where we are now in terms of the modelling that is, has been done and is being done um, in the course of the, well, in the context of the Milton Road project. So now I will hand over to Chris Tunstall, who is the City Deal Interim Director of Transport, and Paul Vanderbilt, who is the Milton Road Project Manager, and they will introduce themselves so that you can then be aware of what their role is in the context of our project here, the Milton Road Project, and then um, we'll proceed to item six, which is the update on the scheme development including an outline of the scope of the assessment work in hand, options being considered, and the timeline that will be followed to the board report. So I now hand over, if I may, to Chris Tunstall and Paul Van Gogh. Well, now you're going to find it difficult to see the presentation behind you. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to be tampered. Yeah. And I'll take the table. a review was done at the beginning of the year and identified that more resource needed to be put in to make sure that the, the schemes kept on track and uh, uh, LLFs like this were fully engaged and uh, fully incorporated into the uh, process. Just a little bit of background on me, I've been 40 years in transport, a bit too long really. Um, my, uh, my home ground, home stomping ground, some may recognise the accent, is West Yorkshire. Uh, or Yorkshire, uh, Bradford, Huddersfield, round there for uh, quite a few years, 20 years, and then went up to Durham. And I say that Durham is very similar to Cambridge. Of course, the university in Cambridge is far better. Uh, although my wife works for the university in Durham, so I've got to be a little bit careful about that. Um, but it's a microcosm of Cambridge. Durham's only 60,000 people, 135,000 in Cambridge. When the students come in, they actually swamp the city even more than uh, they do in Cambridge. So it, it is very similar, but it's a much smaller uh, part. We have got a castle, this is my joke. We've still got a castle, you've got a hill. Um, but we didn't sell the stone, uh, that's still there. Uh, and that's part of the university, it's one of the university colleges. And um, the last 10 years I've been interim, um, moving around the country, places like Hull, um, Surrey, London, TfL, some of the London boroughs, more recently Birmingham, um, Dunaldham, East Cheshire. So I've been around a lot and really, really wanted this role because this is a real opportunity. I know to some of you it may feel as though um, it's, it's something that has been done to you. That's certainly not the case now, let me tell you that straight away. Um, you know, you're the people that actually have to live here. What we're trying to do is to make the environment far better for you, so yes, we are looking at the streetscape, we are looking at the urban realm, but what we've got to be really careful about is we're looking for 2031 and we know the traffic's going to increase and we know there's going to be about a 30% increase in congestion and the last thing we want is Milton Road to be like the M25 at times, a car park, because that's not going to improve the infrastructure at all. So it's just trying to get everything we want 
and improve the environment um, for you primarily foremost at the same time. Um, just some of my, uh, I don't know what's happening with that, it seems to be going up now. Um, some of my, uh, one of my claims to fame, although you'll probably not even recognise it, um, back in 2000 we actually came down to Cambridge, I was at Durham at the time, to see what was being done with the the core, the Cambridge core work and the raised and lower bollard that you'll uh, remember um, and um, what you've done with the park and rights because we were looking to do the same in Durham and we actually did that, we had a raised and lower bollard and I could have sold the rights for that ten times over with some of the uh, the escapades that uh, were videoed on it but more importantly the reason we had a raised and lower bollard we actually put the congestion charge in so you might think London was the first congestion charge, it actually wasn't Durham was the first congestion charge. A very small street in Durham, but it was the principal, it was a congestion charge. Everybody agreed with it, only four people actually objected. And they objected to the principle of having to pay for road space, um, which I totally agree with. Um, but we had to do something about it. And we put a road congestion charge in up to what we call the peninsula, which uh, the cathedral and the uh, castle is. So I'm really looking forward to uh, working with you down here. I've been down here for the last couple of months getting a feel for the schemes because we have a number of schemes ongoing as you know. Milton Road, critical scheme. Um, it was mentioned about the, the July meeting. I'll let Councillor Herbert explain the June to July and so on. But the key there is I think, although it's been mentioned, there are two other major schemes on there, the A428 and City Access. It's Milton Road that is the key to that uh, committee, uh, that board meeting. That's the one that's going to take the length of time. City access is more about an update, and the four to eight is very much about an update as well. The decision making is around Milton Road, so you will get the, uh, the time there. Um, that's enough about me. If I can perhaps now just give you an overview of what we've been doing over the last few months. And I think the first and foremost point to say is that we're working on the Do Optimum scheme. So that's our base scheme, Do Optimum. So the scheme that you've developed, we want to work with that scheme. But we have got objectives. Thank you, Richard. So we have got uh, project objectives to meet. And I know that Councillor Herbert back in November reiterated three of those. But one of the key ones there is about bus priority. We need to move people. Um, out from Water Beach and places like that into the city centre. So that is going to be one of the key areas. We've got to get that comprehensive priority for buses. We've got to get that additional capacity because of the, the housing sites and say, the employment sites. Um, but it has to be safer and more convenient. We do want to incorporate, we need to incorporate walking and cycling. Um, the key though is reducing traffic levels. If we don't reduce traffic levels from what you've currently got, you'll get 30% more than what you've currently got. That's by 2031. That's on a conservative estimate of the increase in traffic volumes arising from the new housing developments that are going in. And the key there is we want to improve the environment, the air quality, and enhance the area. And I, seriously, I'm not going to do that for you. You're not going to be thanking me if we do that and you still a load of cars there and all you see is cars parked, waiting in queues, steaming through Milton Road uh, day in, day out, or so five days a week. Thanks, Richard. Okay, so to give you an update, we had the design workshops back in uh, September and December, and you came up with your 12 resolutions, and I'd like to go through those resolutions and tell you where we were at. The health warning I'll put on it, the wording we've put on is good officers speak, in terms of it's not our ultimate decision. Yes, we make recommendations to the board, but the board determines. So where you see words like should, we mean yes, we agree with you, and we will make that recommendation. And the board should, hopefully, then incorporate that and, and take that on board um, in the design. Um, it is based, again, on the Do Optimum solution. It's not based on anything else. We are working with the Do Optimum. We're trying to make sure it does meet the objectives. Um, you know what the date is. The date's the 26th of July that we'll be going to. The, the assembly, of course, is a week before that. We have also got meetings pending with the LLF 
when we come back with the modelling work. The modelling work's ongoing, the surveying work. One of the questions uh, that I saw earlier, I don't think it was asked, was people have seen surveyors out there. Um, yes, there are surveyors out there, they're doing topological surveys, they're checking where all the drive entrances are to make sure they're exactly as uh, they should be on the survey. We're even doing curb checks to see how good the granite curbs are because we want to reuse the curbs wherever we can <coughs> to keep the environment as we've currently got it. So in terms of the, the resolutions, so the first resolution was to develop the do optimum. We're doing that. That's exactly what we're doing. But we're trying to make sure that we can cover everything <coughs> within the do optimum. So that's the basis of our future design. In terms of the second resolution, the closure of Union, closure of Union Lane, we've taken that on board, but we are looking at other options. So other options might be alternate cycles on the side road. Quite common, I think there's one on Histon, um, where instead of the side road green coming in at every cycle, as we call it, so you'd have Milton Road running through and then Union Lane would come in um, and then you'd, you'd have Milton coming through again, Union Lane again, you'd have Milton Road coming through, then you'd have the other junction, then you'd have Milton Road, then you'd have Union Lane. It's things like that we're looking at. We're not saying any decisions have been made, they're all part of the modelling. The point is though, we're trying to take on board everything that's uh, been suggested and come back with something that we think will work within the objectives and produce a much better environment for yourselves. Uh, everyone here, what DYL Oh, sorry. There were yellow lines. I had that down because, as daft as it sounds, when I went through the, uh, the, the uh, presentation, I said, so what does DYL mean? Double yellow lines. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, sorry about that, yes. Uh, it says it's up above, but I actually wrote it down to remind myself, to remind you what DYL meant. We live in worlds of acronyms, I'm afraid. It's, uh, it gets worse. Um, so the uh, Queen Eliz uh, the sorry Elizabeth Way roundabout um, roundabout design looking uh, at Dutch style uh, roundabout. We're looking at that. There is an issue around Dutch style roundabouts. You make improvements for cyclists that automatically cuts down on <laughs> flows around the roundabout. TfL have done some work. TfL transport TRL transport research lab have done work on that and identified that that's good. But we are trying to model that to show just what the implications of that will be. So we're not saying no or maybe or yes. We're saying we're just trying to model it to see what the implications will be. So go back to the point. If we put a Dutch style roundabout in and it ends up with loads of queues, is everybody going to be happy with that? I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Some might be, but as residents and you're living next to those queues, would you be happy with it? So we just want to know what the implications are. That will come back and we'll have that debate. Um, in terms of um, two-way cycling uh, facilities uh, between Asham and uh, King's Hedges and then Herbert Street and Asham, we're looking at that. We think it's really tight to get that in. That's why we need the topological survey. Because a line on an ordnance survey map at the 1250 is half a metre. And half a metre is a big difference um, when you're trying to get, say, two metres or a, a two metre footway or a two metre cycle wave. So we need to be exact on the widths, and that's what we're doing at the moment, making sure we have that detail. So, R5. Um, yes, trees and grass verges. We're looking to ensure that we incorporate the trees and grass verges. But you can see that if we're incorporating footways, trees and grass verges, cycleways each way, two-way traffic and a bus lane, I'm ending up with a motorway style road if I'm not careful. So we are looking to make sure we can squeeze as much in as we possibly can. So we are adopting that and that will be the principle we, we work to. There was just that slight caveat that sometimes the road just isn't wide enough. Something has to give, and I'm not saying it's the verges or the trees, but something might have to give. It could well be the busway that gives, um, or the bus lane, should I say, that, uh, that gives. Um, footpaths and cycle lanes to have priority over vehicular traffic. 
Both of these say should. This is where we're saying yes, we agree with you. Um, that we do want to look to give priority um, over um, minor roads for uh, cyclists and pedestrians. The irony of some of this is, you know, that we're all part of the issue. Um, a lot of us are drivers, and a lot of us are drivers that once we're on the road think, well, okay, hang on a minute, I've got right of way here. And of course, as a driver, you have. That's law in this country. In Holland, that's not the case. Cyclists have that right of way. You've got to take care of them. Of course, you do far more damage to them, so we've got to be really careful. I've just come back from Mallorca. Mallorca has got cyclists galore in there now, and they're all mingling with the traffic. They have segregated cycle lanes, but they're only a white line down and probably coloured uh, tarmac, but they're not fully segregated as we look to do in this country, and there are a lot of cyclists out there, uh, and on some quite uh, nerve-wracking hairpin bends and so on, on some steep hills where buses are passing you. And it all into reacts, it all does work. I'm not saying that's the panacea, but I'm saying it can work. And it's all about getting into the psyche of drivers more than anything else. Of course, in Cambridge, that's a bit better, but elsewhere in the country, that starts to become a problem. Thanks, Richard. Uh, so we're looking at cycle and short-term uh, parking um, at the, the shopping centres, the two uh, that are indicated there. And yes, we'll take that on board. Um, again, it says should, sure, but yes, that's what we mean, we'll take it on board. Um, in terms of off-road parking, yes, we're doing a survey of that. So properties that don't have uh, off-road parking, we're looking to make sure that those properties can be accommodated um, with uh, uh, parking for the future, whether that be down side roads or whatever. We are looking as well at the whole area in terms, I think that was another query that's been raised, as, uh, a, as you understand the residence parking zone, I understand it as controlled parking zones. But that's another thing that's been uh, looked at as part of the city access. This area is, is going to be one of the 26 that we're looking at in, in total, which will ring the outer bit of Cambridge. We've already got the inner bit, but it will ring the outer bit as well. Um, in terms of bus stops, yes, um, we will look at all the locations of bus stops and wherever possible um, we'll look at the uh, crossing locations at the same time. This is getting more into the detail. The point is we've accepted the principle that that's what we're looking to do. You will be involved in the detail anyway, so it's not as though it's going to go away and then all of a sudden it will be presented to you as a fait accompli. The point is the principle that we're looking to adopt is the principle you've asked for in the resolution. Then at the Golden Hind Junction, um, the uh, continental style roundabout or a uh, signalised junction. I have to say roundabouts are, they don't have the same capacity as signal junctions. In terms of drivers hesitate and wait. As a driver you know when you've got a green light you go. When you've got a roundabout you hesitate, you wait. There's inherent delays in that. So roundabouts work in certain circumstances. They don't work in the best circumstances, in, in the most heavily trafficked circumstances. I remember going back 40 years, and I, I remember it well, I wasn't part of it. I went to work for West Yorkshire Met County Council, and they signalled a roundabout. It was the first roundabout in the country that was signalled. That was 40 years ago. All hell let loose. Nobody liked it. Eventually it was taken out. Common practice now to signal roundabouts. So all I'm saying is that we, we need to look at the capacity through that junction. We'll look at both, whether it's a signalised junction or whether it's a roundabout, and we'll bring that information back to you and have that debate and discussion with you. Right. Um, influence with the County Council. Um, charges at the Milton Park and Ride site, I couldn't possibly say. Um, that is something that will have to come back um, from the, the county council, it's, it's their remit is that. I know discussions have been had at uh, the City Deal Board and the thoughts of the City Deal Board have been made quite clear, but that is something for the, the county to, uh, to work to. The second part of that is about commuter parking. Yes, we are looking at that, as I mentioned earlier, with the residence parking, the control parking zones. 
Um, and uh, the third bit then is looking at all park and rides and community park and that is something that's certainly been done on the community parking and whatever the outcome of the county I'm sure it will apply across the board with park and rides whichever way um, that's determined in the future. Um, in terms of um, the city centre access and congestion team, I know this is, a, this is an issue and I understand this issue that we've got all these radial routes that we're working on, Milton Road obviously that's the one you're interested in but I've also got the 428 Camborne uh, to Cambridge Hill. I've also got the 1307 Haverhill through to, um, to basically Edinburgh Hill Road. I've got those look. And then of course you hit the city centre and what happens? Because all you end up with is another queue. Uh, you've just moved the queue basically. Which is to a certain extent why we need to get people out of their cars and onto buses and not onto uh, uh, necessarily diesel but nice electric buses, you know, non-polluting buses and things like that. We need to get them out of the cars. That's the, the prime thing. To get them out of the cars, of course, is to give them that confidence that they've got priority going in. Because if we can get them out of the cars, that will resolve some of the city centre. But of course, doing the uh, controlled parking zones, that will also push uh, vehicles further out and make it more viable for people. I mean, I, just recently, um, uh, a colleague, uh, shall say who, shall say where they were, just said to me, and I have to say it's not the county council, um, had to say to me, uh, well, of course, I know what I should do. I pass that park and ride, and then I go and park on our site. And I know I should get park and ride, because park and ride runs past the site. But human nature is that people don't. Um, people tend to try and get as close as they possibly can. And, I, you know, I'd class myself as one of those. I'm not saying I'm any different to anybody else. You get that little tin box, um, things sort of change around you. Um, but that is something, in terms of city access, we are looking at sort of crunching the demand, um, demand management within the uh, city itself. But that's got to be balanced with the city's open for business, the city is a lively city, the city's got shopping, it's got commercial, so you've got to balance that all the time. But that is key, so we have that city access working and the team's working on the radials, so Paul and Richard are working with the city access people as well. So that's all been uh, tied together. Okay. So, in terms of how we're reviewing this, we've got to go back to the, uh, the objectives. We've got to make sure that the objectives are being achieved. I'm not saying the objectives have all got to be achieved 100%, but we have got to look to achieve the objectives. Um, does the uh, design improve? Was journey times and reliability? That, to be fair, that is fairly key to us because no matter how much additional capacity we put in for walking and cycling, that does not move as much as public transport does. And of course, some people, they cannot do walking and cycling. They've got to have public transport. So we've got to make sure it applies to the whole uh, gambit of, uh, of our population. Um, it's got to work safely. It's got to be a safe thing. The other thing as well to bear in mind is we are a very conservative with a small c um, nation in terms of transport. Um, I remember it's only about three, three years ago, four years ago, that um, Transport for London, TfL, actually put countdowns on pedestrian crossings. Now, if you go to the States or you go abroad, this is commonplace. What is the problem with that? But they weren't regulated. They weren't regulated, they weren't approved. They weren't approved, you couldn't put them in. You can get exemptions, but it's hard work getting exemptions. Another one, um, classic, if you're in the States, because they're uh, right hand, they drive on the right, any right filter you can filter at a junction. You can't hear unless there's a filter arrow on your signals, but you don't need a filter arrow in the States. They've got to be careful, they've got to watch the crossings, they've got to do everything else, but they drive that way, they know what to do. Um, I have to say their safety record isn't that great. Um, if you look at the number of people killed in the States, proportionally to the number of people killed here, it is phenomenally more. I forget the figure. My son challenged me, so I quickly got some figures up from Google, and it was phenomenal. It was something like 10 times uh, in terms of deaths. Another useless piece of fact 
they've actually lost more people killed on their roads than they've lost in any war that they've ever been in, including the American Civil War. But, but Stupid that, bit of information. Is that for the mileage, though, of roads? No, 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 that's, that's equated to population. It's population. Okay, but they've got a hell of a lot more roads in America than they have here. Yeah, but there's only so many people can, the population can drive, that's the only people that can drive. So it's people driving. Okay, so in terms of the highway fit, it's got to fit, that's the survey that we're doing. Um, in terms of the key junctions, we're looking at the various options, we'll bring the modelling back on the, the, the key junctions and show you just what is the art of the possible and what the impact may be of doing certain other things. Okay, Richard. So in terms of the traffic modelling, as I say, we're doing the key junctions. Um, that at the moment is a model called Pramix. Uh, it's, it's a model I've used before, a model I've used in Durham. I remember it well. We had a dual carriageway coming into Durham, two lines of traffic that were stationary for about three quarters of a mile uh, from the junction. We wanted to put a bus lane down, so it would leave one lane for traffic, bus park and ride, uh, and a bus lane and the elected members, the county council members, could not believe the queues would not uh, be twice as long. And actually we demonstrated the queues would be no longer for the traffic than they currently were three quarters of a mile. But we freed up a whole lane for the buses. And to be fair, I didn't care about the three quarters of a mile traffic because if they'd have just gone three quarters of a mile further back, they could have gone on the park and ride and come straight through, so I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. But the point is, it demonstrated that, and that's exactly what happened. And it's, it is a nice model. When you see it, um, it you, I'm hoping you will be impressed, because it's moved on since I've used it. That was about 10 years ago. Okay, um, in terms of um, the comparison, the comparisons with do nothing. So it's the do optimum with the options with do nothing. So that's the comparison we're doing. The do nothing is based on the 20 or 31 uh, flows. Uh, but we are looking at, as I say, all the other options. Quickly just running through some of the issues. Don't want to, you know, don't want to hide some of the, the issues that we might have. But I'm not saying that these are issues, I'm just saying these are what we've already flagged. Um, so on the first section, from Mitcham's Corner up to Asham, because we've already got bus lanes there, the do optimum doesn't have any bus lanes there, so we've compromised uh, and we've taken bus lanes out. That's an issue, we've got to look at that. Um, but there is insufficient width there. No, why it's happened, but there is insufficient width. Uh, there is a question as well that at Herbert Street, I think it's been asked for a, a crossing, and we need to ascertain the, uh, the numbers that we might get there. I, the old days where we put um, just standard zebra crossings in, and some authorities are going back to that, they're probably running about £10,000. I don't wouldn't care to think how much toucans and pelicans run out these days, but they must be at least 50000 plus. That's not to be a reason not to do it, but of course there are rationales for why you put signalised junctions in. If car drivers constantly go through a, a signalised junction that is never at red, their perception is it's never at red. And how many times have you driven from A to B on autopilot uh, and you've wondered, how did I get from A to B? And that's what happens when you get to signalised junctions that don't operate or don't kick in very often. And you've more of a safety issue. So something we just need to look at, I'm not saying that that's going to be a problem, I'm just saying it's an issue we need to, uh, to consider and come back to you about. Um, mentioned about Elizabeth Way and the capacity there. We will model that, we'll come back to you with that and tell you. We don't know at the moment. Um, the modelling on Dutchdale roundabouts isn't precise because it's not something, as you probably know, it will be one of the first within the countries, if not in the country, it's not something that's commonly used even within London. Um, a bus lane is required on Milton Road approaches to the roundabout, question. I think junctions are the issue. It's not, it's not the lengths in between. Where you get delays, I suppose it's just saying the common sense, it's the junction. That's where you get the delay. So that's where we've got to get the buses through. It's not actually the length in between, perversely, because you steam them up just before the junction and they, you might get them a bit further forward in the queue, but if you don't get them right up to the front end, then they still suffer some element of delay. Um, and uh, we're talking about 
the possibility of a signalised roundabout there as well. So we are looking at all the options there uh, to try and come up with a solution that we think meets the do optimum and meets some of the objectives as well. In terms of uh, section three, so we're looking at, um, you've, you've got a number of signal, within a signal uh, cycle, um, you have what we call stages. So Milton Road will be a stage, Arbury Road will be a stage, the pedestrian phase will be a stage, the cycle phase will be a stage. And between every stage you have an all red. So you actually end up with inherent delay built in to the more stages you have, the more delay you get built into the overall cycle. So it's, it's just trying to work that through. Again, not saying it wouldn't work, we just need to see what the implications of, of that are through the, uh, the modelling. And again, in terms of bus lane and the queues, we need to make sure that we model where the queues are. We need the bus lane to be at a point where it actually accommodates the buses to get to the front of the queues. So that's a, a question as well that we're looking at. Um, longer bus lanes is a problem because obviously trying to get in the two-way cycling and so on, then that takes more road space out. So again, we'll try and get the optimum length on that. But again, it's something we'll come back on. So in terms of the Arbury Road, then up to Woodhead. Um, so again, we think the queues when we get to the junctions are going to be such that we're going to need um, some bus lanes in there. I mean, there is already a bus lane in there that isn't in the do optimum. Um, so we think we will need to look at the bus lane situation there. Um, but again, we need to make sure there's sufficient room for that. Um, and the, the thing about the trees, I, and I know this will only be a schematic on the do optimum, but the trees are all nice evenly spaced out. Unfortunately, drive accesses don't work that way. Uh, and so we've just got to make sure, which is why we want to plot all the drive accesses and make sure that we get the trees in the right location. We get as many trees in as we possibly can. Then um, on uh, the next section, that takes us up to King Hedges Road, up to uh, the Hind. Um, so anticipated queues, we do think, again, will require some bus lanes on that. Um, there is a bus lane certainly running part of the way up there to uh, Passwood Head Drive. Um, and again, is there is sufficient room? We will know better when we've got that survey. And again, it's about the private drives and where the trees are. But we are looking to get the trees in, but obviously not planted in somebody's private drive, because I think that might be an issue for them. Um, in terms of the Golden Hind, then running up to the end of the scheme, um, here, the question is, is signalled or do we want the Dutch style roundabout? Um, we need to look at that. The, there is that impact on uh, capacity. And again, limited bus lanes on the approach to the roundabout. Um, our feeling is, I have to say, our feeling is signalised will probably give us a far better result out of that. But I'm not saying that we're not looking at that. We are looking at that. And if it shows that for the sake of perhaps a, a little drop in capacity, we can get uh, a roundabout out of that. That's fine, and that's what we'll look for. So, we're uh, looking for uh, the data on private accesses. We're doing additional service, uh, surveys on the crossing movements. Um, we're doing laser surveys, which is that's the topographical surveys, that's what's ongoing now. I think someone asked about, well, when, when are you actually going to start construction? Um, if I was to say next week, I think there'd be absolute uproar. It's 2020, so it's, it's quite a way down, but it's a process. This is not, you know, the, the detailed design, it's getting the design principles in place, most of which we accept from the, the resolution uh, that you uh, put forward. But we need to then start working up the detailed design, as they always say, the devil's in the detail. So, in terms of timeline, so we're coming back to you early mid-June. We need this uh, Paramix uh, modelling because without it, you know, it's no good me sitting down and saying, well, Dutch style, yeah, it's going to reduce capacity. You're going to want the best information we can give you and that's what we're going to get. In terms of um, the schemes that have been run, this is the first scheme that's been run with Paramix. 
So we will look to run other schemes as well. But it's a far more detailed model, and as I said, it's, it, it is quite a good model. And it's very visual in terms of uh, seeing exactly what's happening to queue lengths um, and so on. But it is a model, you know, and yeah. car drivers are fickle things. Can I have a question at that point? How will that um, be shown to us? Richard, is that going to be something we can project onto the screen? <clears throat> Not the actual model itself. With the model, it's run multiple times. It extracts data and averages them. There'll be lots of uh, data in the form of tables which will show you the queue lengths, the journey times for bus and non-bus in the vehicle. So there'll be quite a bit of data there, but actually showing the model, running it in real time. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, will you be able to be in a position to show us a visual impression of what you've modelled. In other words, a visual impression of what the road will look like, what the junction might look like, and in the background you would be able to inform that with data on this is going to be sufficient capacity or it's not going to be sufficient capacity. We can certainly provide layout diagrams to show you the, the, the layout of the junction that's been modelled. And, that, and with the delays and the queue lengths. We can show you the data that comes out from the modelling in terms of the queues, the delays, and the journey times. Okay. I hope that's as easy for us to understand as possible. I, I have to say, um, it's a real challenge to take that data and convert it into a, an easily accessible form. We'll have to do a lot of work on that, and there may be quite a lot of questions that come out of the data we present. It's always quite a challenge to get um, the layperson to understand what the model is actually showing. I was hoping you might be able to have a lovely visualisation of us flying down Milton Road <laughs> and seeing what it's like. Well, funnily enough, yes. We've confirmed the design we've worked with that. That's yes. Well, that's what would be nice. Yes, okay. that's, that's exactly what. But that, to show you that, we've got to agree what the, the principles are. I mean, the detailed design will come afterwards, but we've got to know that it's a signal or it's a roundabout where the bus lane is, where it isn't, where the cycleways are, where we're putting all the trees, the hedges and uh, the verges. So, so that you, you will aim to show us some kind of such visualisation towards the end of the process when yes. you've got some of the parameters yes. fixed. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Chris. Yeah. You can skip over sort of the uh, question that came from the floor about mitigation and um, when the actual building process I'll come on to that. I've made it at the last bit. Sorry, but I haven't forgotten it, but I made it the last bit. It didn't it didn't fit in very well in terms of sorry. Could, could I ask something about the volume? Yeah. The, the, I imagine the usual thing is that you set a number of outcomes for this parametric model. And the outcomes are largely in terms of the alternatives and what kind of delay will be caused at particular times of the day. I've looked today at the uh, the uh, parametric model as it was applied to Mitchell's Corner, and it is reasonably understandable to me uh, how the delays would be uh, would, would work out with different assumptions and different. And, and the, in this case, I think there's only one alternative at the moment. Is, is, it, is this the same process? In other words, you set, a, you set a number of outcomes which are essentially delays to traffic at presumably peak times in the day, and these become the key outcomes to consider the various options. I'm sure I'll be correct if I'm wrong. No, you come from the, the other end. What you do is, so the question is, do we set the parameters in terms of um, delay outcomes we want? And that gives us the no, sort sorry, of... I didn't, I didn't mean that. Right. Uh, it won't come out. Well, okay, well, no, we don't. What, the way it works is we know what the flows of traffic are. We know what the projected flows, what they are on the projected flows will be in uh, 2031. We know what the... Uh, options are for different layouts and it actually models the flows through those different options and tells you what the delays, the queue lengths and so on are for those different yeah. options. Yeah. Yeah, in the modelling, uh, will it consider modelling across journeys for the entire journey, say through to, yeah. to Addenbrooke? Well, 
it will run a, we will also, so what we'll do is we, we model the individual junctions to see what the delays are at the individual junctions, but we also model the full length of Milton Road, not all the way through, so the full length of this scheme we will model, because this scheme's looking at the, the potential delays here. I know where you're coming from, that once you get then to Mitchum's Corner, what, what then happens? Yes, I think anyone here would say, if you increase traffic in Cambridge by 30%, and you're trying to get to Ellenbrooks, any saving Milton Road will completely what? Into, into a blue and pulled up for, for yeah. the further what, what city access... You, you've, the unfortunate thing is you've got to start somewhere. Um, you can't do that. If we were to suggest, suggest, suggest we did the whole of the city in one go, then you just wouldn't be able to do it. So you've got to make it into bite-sized chunks. City access are actually in... June, very early June, because we don't want to run into the university holidays, they're doing a full um, automatic number plate uh, count, so that will give us origin and destination, running right out from the M11, right into the city, going out the other side, coming up to Milton Road. We will know exactly, only by vehicle, and it will not give us vehicle number, so you're all right there, only by vehicle, where a vehicle comes in, and then where a vehicle exits. And if there's a time delay, a set time, we'll know that vehicle's gone somewhere in the city. The key with that is we'll know, so exactly the question you're asking, we will know what's happening from coming um, off Milton Road and for those vehicles that then want to go to Adam Brooks. But it'll tell us even more than that. It'll tell us those that want to go up to West Cambridge. It'll tell us those that are going to want to go up to the airport and perhaps through right through to Hayville or somewhere like that. But shouldn't you sort out the overall strategy first? I'm not yes. saying you should build it all at once. Well, but so when, whenever you do something like this, you start with a strategy and then you build the bits of the time within a strategy. The strategy, for, it, then find your the strategy for the city centre is a 10 to 15 percent reduction in traffic on 2011 figures. So that is the strategy. The means to achieve that strategy are various. It's a bit like this. We have, we have a strategy for Milton Road, which is about improving um, access along Milton Road, particularly for um, public service vehicles, for buses and uh, public transport. The actual means to do that is the whole purpose of being here. Um, if we come up with the detail with city access, then we would be accused of not involving people and there's all sorts of things. So demand management in terms of parking, in terms of the control parking, there's been talk about workplace parking levy, which is where businesses are charged for having car parks for uh, uh, their um, own uh, employees. That's been used in Nottingham. So we're looking at a load of means, but the strategy is a 10 to 15 percent reduction. That's the strategy for uh, I have a question to ask, but I would like to allow you to finish your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I'm nearly done, and then I come back. It is straight on to questions after this. Yeah. So, just um, very quickly, early mid June, we're coming back to you. We will have that modelling. Um, the six of then, following on from that, we will be working up the the scheme. We'll be working up the report. The sixth of July is the deadline because the assembly actually um, meets a week before so we publish the papers earlier than we would normally publish them uh, just for the board um, and that's a point I mean I don't want to get into um, Lewis will uh, actually come back I'm sure on the the June meeting but the June assembly meeting was the day before the general election um, and that's one of the killers um, so I, I know there are issues there and people say we'll move that but it, it's not as straightforward unfortunately um, but I'll let Lewis come back and, and answer that one. Um, on the, uh, the 19th of July then there is the joint assembly meeting and then on the 26th is the executive board and I know that Jocelyn will be there representing you as the chair of the, uh, the LLF and putting uh, the views of the LLF forward but you'll have seen the report anyway so that report will be available. You'll have had input into that <coughs> process in early June, late June which um, just in terms of the executive board report so what it will do it will review the delivery priorities um, of Milton primarily Milton Road um, it will do the evaluation of those priorities on the do optimum it will respond but you've had our thoughts on the responses already um, to the LLF resolutions and most of those 
if not all, we said yes. Um, maybe one or two with slight caveats. Um, recommendations on any changes that might come about. I have to say, the one thing that, that comes out more than anything else is that the compromise, the thing that's been lost in the proposal on the do optimum is bus lanes. So we're losing bus lanes, we're not gaining them, we're losing them. So that's something we have got to try and uh, incorporate. Um, the need for mitigation, side road parking uh, and uh, the impact of, of through traffic uh, and then it will also identify the next steps. I mean after that it will go out for consultation, so the amount of consultation on this and the LLF will be involved in the detailed design. So there are a lot more stages. The input, um, the potential for input is, uh, is uh, great on this. I mean, this is the first time I've been anywhere where the LLFs have virtually started from day one uh, and been involved. It is really, you might not feel it's felt that way, but it, you know, seriously, from what's happened elsewhere that I've seen, I'm not saying that's right, but the input here is great compared to what I've seen elsewhere. Um, and then we'll update the project programme. So we are looking for 2020. I'm not saying it'll take what it takes, because some of the questions earlier about is our funding secure? The answer to that is yes, City Deal has been signed. And the slight caveat to that is that every five years you've got to go through a gateway review. And that's in 2019, although we're looking to try and tie it in with the combined authority, which is 2020. Um, so, you know, you've got to be hitting what the money was given for. Um, so that is the slight caveat on the, the money, but the money is there, the money is secure. We just need to hit the objectives for City Deal. Okay, so in terms of the one final question, so it brings on the questions. Um, just the one point. When we do any scheme, so when you get to the detailed design, the first thing, the one prime thing you've got to do is make sure that you've got buildability, called the CDM regs, construction design management uh, regulations. Part of that is ensuring the traffic management is sound. Um, part of the traffic management is looking to see what impacts that has elsewhere uh, on the network. I'm not saying that you can achieve a major thing like Milton Road without causing some delays, because I think the realism is there will be some delays. What I can assure you is that there is a full process around trying to mitigate those delays, trying to ensure the working arrangements, maximise the working arrangements, but then if you're a resident on Milton Road, you're not going to be overly impressed if someone starts winding up at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. You might accept it for five days, but on a Saturday morning, you may well not. I won't be happy. You might not be happy at 8 o'clock at night. So it's, it's getting those compromises. But those are the things that we look at, trying to maximise the works, maximise the throughput through the site, keeping the site safe for the operatives. Um, it, it is a full process that we go through. It's as detailed as the detailed design. Okay. I know there was a question. Yeah, I was... Go back to sitting at the table. Yeah, because I'm hiding in the dark here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and I know there's a few questions, and I will not mm. uh, forget. I'll come out to the front, and then I can. Yes.
how long we should continue because in the end there are probably a lot of questions that people would like to ask. In the end, however, we all do get tired, I suppose. Um, will, will we say absolute to stop at a quarter past eight? Does that sound okay? My watch says about 10 to eight. So would everybody be happy if we fitted questions in and did not go beyond a quarter past eight? Is there any distinction? Good. Good. Now, there was somebody down here who was anxious, but also um, Charles here is very anxious. So may we have Charles first and then down there? Yes, thank you. Do we have to decide about time now? Because if something crucial comes up up to 10 minutes past eight, yeah, it might take long to discuss. Well, shall we aim for a quarter past? And if something absolutely stunningly urgent arises, <laughs> Shall we aim for quarter to nine? No. Uh, <laughs> 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 while, you're debating, while you're debating how long we go on for, I'll, I'll start with a question. <laughs> very comprehensive. Thank you very much indeed for all of that. Right at the start, there was a, a worry thrown into my mind by your statement that we know that traffic congestion is going to increase by 30%. Well, I don't know, we do. Every time you can hear something behind Brexit or the French elections on the news, it's talking about changes in pattern of vehicle ownership and vehicle use. And it may well be that uh, private car usage would drop away anyway, quite apart from the measures which you are very sensibly going to put into place. What account is being taken of potential and probable changes in vehicle usage? Okay, thank you for that. Um, can I first, just my fault, apologies for this, introduce Paul. Paul was uh, introduced very early on uh, by Jocelyn, but Paul is the project manager for uh, Milton Road. He's new on the, the job, so he comes with a fresh pair of eyes and he will now be leading on this and uh, supporting me in making sure we come up with a scheme that's something that you uh, wish to see for the future. Going back to the point, um, it is only a projection. What we're working on is we know that we're going to get an extra 40,000 houses. We know there's going to be a massive development up at Water Beach, which is going to directly affect um, Milton Road. So we can only project on, on what we know and what past history has been. And the only time that traffic has reduced in past history is when we had the recession in 2007. And then traffic steadied, and then traffic's grown again. So I'm not saying it's a, a science that we can say is going to be, I can predict categorically it will be a 30% increase. But what I can tell you is, over the years, there has been a steady increase, no matter what we've done in traffic volumes. Um, and there's nothing to suggest unless we provide something different, an alternative, there's nothing to suggest that that will alter. I'm not saying, you know, you could say in 15 years time, well Chris you were wrong, um, but certainly at the moment, based on past history, that's always been the case. It's increased, it's not gone down. But I don't think that will do because things are changing for the first time since the introduction of private motor car ownership things appear to be changing. And you must, if you're going to engineer on this scale, you must, must look at it. What we're looking to do, what we're looking to do is to provide alternative means. So if something's going to change, there's got to be an alternative mean. That's what we're looking to provide. We're looking to provide buses. I mean, the future, we're also looking at, some of you may come across in, in the press and so on, Advanced Rapid Transit, AVRT, which is basically narrow underground tunnels with narrow buses that run from stop, well, from a point to a point, and then you get off and get on at another point, but underground. So we are looking at other options. But I think the other thing that I would say, people will say, so as communication improves, then the need for transport will go down. That just hasn't happened. As communication has improved, as we've got uh, telephone, as we've got Skyping and things like that, the need for transport has gone up at the same pace as communications have gone up as well. 
it, it, it just hasn't changed, it just hasn't gone down. And if, if the people who have lived on Milton Road, I ask the question, have you seen an increase in traffic over the years? Going down? I stand corrected if that's what you say. Ricky, you watch it. The train. How about the train? That's, that's public transport. Yeah. A new station in north of Cambridge. I'm looking for one in the south. Get, can get you from the north to the south to yeah. CB1, Centre Employment CB1, Addenbrook Centre Employment. So why do you want to get all these people from Water Beach go through the centre of Cambridge to CB1 yeah, to Addenbrook? Why don't you put the train in place? You yeah. factor that into your thinking. We are, we are doing that. But, I mean, putting the station in takes years. But we're looking at 2031. Yes, we are. So we are. are you factoring that potential change in pattern of, 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 of uh, transport into your figures for road transport? It will affect it, won't it? Will train transport affect road transport? It will if you have a steady state. If, you, if your population stays the same and there's no more travel, of course it will. Yes, it will. But your population is going up. There's a there's a view to increase the population of Cambridge. That's that's what City Deal's been given for. Where, can you tell me, please, where are the centres of employment that these buses are supposed to serve? Can you tell me? Adam Rooks, West Cambridge, Gino Park. So to go from where? From Science Park direction all the way through central well, town? This is the point I was making earlier. It was about the city access is part and parcel of the whole thing, but we've chunked it to make it manageable. So yes, we are looking at that. Good. Could we have the question down here? And then there's a question here. Sorry. How much do you have to increase road capacity by 30%? Right. Could we have that question answered after the gentleman down there because he's had his hand up for a long time and then there's somebody down here and then we'll come back to that question that was asked about the city centre access. Okay. Thank you. Can I make two points? Uh, I think that I'd like to compare Milton Road with the villages in South Cambridgeshire. If we go out into the villages in South Cambridgeshire, what we see are with restrictions. So on entering the village, there are things like chicanes and that kind of thing. And then we get flashing speed signs and speed humps and such like. And that is to discourage people who do not live in the village um, from getting through the village. And it is in, to enhance the quality of life of the people who live in the village high street. What I think that the people here are, are the equivalent of people in the village high street. And all of the presentation that I've seen are, you know, relate to people who want to go through the village high street. And you know, this is the, the contrast that I see if I go out into the villages. Secondly, picking up on Councillor Bradman's point regarding the modelling, what I would very much like to see is some modelling that shows what Milton Road is like at the moment. Because I think that we would actually have some confidence in the modelling if you can actually model Milton Road at the moment and demonstrate where the queues are with the present situation. And then we would have some confidence in the, in the improvements which you're, which you're hoping to improve. And I'm sorry, as a design engineer of 40 odd years standing, that is precisely the point I would start from. It's you, know, you start from the known and then you move to the unknown with modelling and with all sorts of design. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's like question time. Now, just um, taking the last point first, I think one of the things we did for show up was we have a do nothing model. So we will have a do nothing model. Sorry. In terms of it will... that do nothing model says that buses will take 29 minutes longer to go down Milton Road if you do nothing. I'm sorry, with 29 minutes, people will go another way. They won't go down Milton Road. So I'm sorry, I don't accept the do nothing model. I can say the whole evening, I suggest that what we do is best change cars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, could, could we proceed in this way if we have three questions and then one answer to the whole three questions? If you you will yeah, be able right. to remember what they are, um, we've got here and over there, and then there's somebody up the back, and I know that there's.
let's have four. Yes, four. So one, two, three, four. Good. I'm getting old. <laughs> and I'm a man. I can't multitask. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Would you mind if I ask a question? I know it's somewhere down the line. It's more about absolutely. delivery in public realm than about a project. Um, which is partly that, for example, when I go down Green End Road and Green End Road cycle scheme. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you need to speak. Could you take the mic? Like yeah. What I said is, can I ask a question about delivery? Which I know is a little way down the line, and so it's not really about the uh, project phase. But when I go down Green End Road and the City Jail cycle scheme, which has just been delivered down there, yeah. essentially, however good the cycle scheme is, it's just been put on top of what is an absolutely awful, awful surface. Yeah. And it's quite clear it's going to degrade again. Mm. So if I am, as I am a resident of Long Road, I know that the pavements are absolutely appalling. Yeah. I know the road surface is absolutely appalling. Yeah. I know that the drainage is absolutely yeah. appalling, particularly yeah. if you walk up from the co-op going up towards Fraser Road. Mm. So what I'd like um, to understand is when the scheme comes in, whatever it involves, will it involve thoroughly sort of taking off and completely resurfacing the road, sorting out all the drainage, and completely doing extremely good public realm um, on the pavement as well, so that we don't end up with what we've got in Green End Road, which is you know very poorly painted over cycle lanes that are clearly going to deteriorate and pavements that people have been trying to get fixed for a long time yeah. and have been left completely untouched and things like that. Now, please do not answer yet because we're having a question about I'm riding around the city access. Perhaps if you ask the question again about the city access so that we can all hear. Thank you. Um, well, I have several questions really, but um, the question I put first was um, I think we're aiming for a 10 to 15 percent reduction in access to the city centre. Why do we need uh, to account for a 30 percent uh, increase in traffic capacity along Milton Road? But my second point is, um, I now see we have uh, an optimum solution. Was that the phrase? I mean, I look, when I look at the Cambridge City website, I see a, a do something, a do maximum, a do no, a do nothing. Um, where do I find details of this do optimum system on the website? Okay, um, right now. When they get around to updating it. Here, please, yeah, if the answer's coming shortly, can somebody write up the back there? Yes. I just want to ask are all the people who are going to live in the villages who want to go into Cambridge every day? Right. Right. They are not going to go into Cambridge every day. Right. Thank you. And then here, with the coloured job box. My concern is that. Money, uh, consultation, professional skills are being put into uh, uh, looking at and trying to resolve very small concerns. Cambridge is no longer just the city. Masses of people live in the villages outside. I live in uh, Marbury Close, just on Marbury Road. There are no buses after six o'clock, so I, and I don't want to drive into the town centre, so effectively I can't participate in, in the evening economy easily. And that is even more true of people who live further up. All sorts of small improvements could be made up, I think, to uh, reduce congestion and so on. But we really ought to be thinking of the overall picture. Because, for example, if I go to a, a trade person to come and do something for me, they say we can't come until at least after 10 o'clock because the vehicle traffic coming in from the villages is so poorly. Um, if you want to go to Ely for the day by public transport, it's practically impossible. If you go up to whatever it is, to interchange, there's a sign that says that it's only two miles. But the bus is coming from Ely through to us, uh, permanently um, late, and so on. And uh, 
the other thing is that um, uh, the very few buses are uh, uh, sort of local to Cambridge that go up and open the road. They're all um, uh, coming from the park and ride or whatever. Could, could, sorry, could, could I answer that question and then we'll pass over to Chris because uh, Andy Campbell, who is the head of Stagecoach, did make a commitment in my... Oh, is Andy here? <laughs> I was going to repeat your commitment that... Do you want me to make it? If you will. Please do. Please do. When the bill, 10,000 pounds is that was that will come down Milton Road, mm. provided it doesn't take me an extra 29 minutes to get down Milton Road. How many houses was that, Andy? 10,000. 10, well, Given I'll, that it's only 9,000 in the local plan. However many houses are built. But in the meantime, there is a nine service that stops on Milton Road every half hour. The reason there are no evening services going to villages and places like that is because insufficient people use them for them to cover their costs. And they used to be funded by Cambridge County Council. Mm -hmm. When they're funded in 2010, yeah. they took the decision to withdraw Correct. all the evening and Sunday and subsidise the yes. It is not a decision that was taken by city. Mm -hmm. So you have it then from Andy Campbell's mouth directly. Now, back to Chris. Um, the question about the de delivery in public realm and the Green End Road um, example of the changes that have been made and yet the um, appalling footpath and problems underneath are remaining. Um, secondly, the access to the city centre. If what we're aiming for is a 10 to 15% reduction in the city centre, then why are we talking about a 30% increase along Milton Road? Um, the, the second one there was where do we find do optimum and I know that everybody here on the table will be able to tell us the answer and then um, uh, is all traffic coming into the city centre? Why are we assuming that everybody from Water Beach is desperate to get into <laughs> Cambridge every <laughs> single day um, and then um, thirdly yes the issue of the villages and the buses after 6pm and we've had a, a response here so, so okay so taking the first one yes it would be as we turn wall to wall so it would be from your property wall to your opposite across the road property wall the whole lot and we'll be looking for high quality materials we talked about the fly through we'll be doing visualization so you can see that the difference with the cycling was it was just putting as you said just sticking a little bit on, on the road so that's what we're looking to do so that you know the environment will improve tremendously in terms of the streetscape environment um, in terms of the 10 15 percent what we're wanting to do is get people out of their cars and onto buses because that makes them then use the buses or onto um, onto cycling that makes them get out that's the alternative because if there isn't an alternative and I mean um, the lady there would say if you haven't got an alternative you're you're stuck um, you either use the car or you use cycle or you walk if there isn't a bus there. What we're wanting to do is to maximise the number of people coming in on buses. And yes, there is issues about where they want to go to once they get into the, the city centre. But of course, what you can't accommodate is you can't accommodate every journey is going to have a bus from A to where their B is because that's every individual. What we will be looking to do is to run the buses through so that we can get to those sites that are the most preferred site. So that's been looked at as part of the bus network review that we're doing at the moment. And those will be discussions that we have with Andy. Ultimately, at the end of the day, as Andy says, people have got to use them and we've got to ensure that uh, they are viable. The other issue, just, just as an aside, so there are 40,000, whatever people may think, there are 40,000 trips, car trips, in, in the morning peak, into Cambridge Centre. That's from the villages, 40,000 trips. Normally, there's, there's only about 50 odd thousand people coming in, so normally one person, one car. That's the scenario. 40,000 trips. Cambridge, 135,000 population, something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, 150. West Midlands, Birmingham, 1.1 million population. 
186,000 trips coming into Birmingham. That's the difference. It doesn't equate. You know, Birmingham isn't four times bigger than Cambridge. It's ten times bigger than Cambridge. So that's the sort of draw that Cambridge has. Yes, drawing in from the villages. And that's exactly what we want to stop. We want to stop the village traffic coming through. We want them to get off at the park and rides, or at the train stations, or at park and cycle, and not bring the cars into the centre. That's the whole purpose. But of course, if we don't kill the demand in the city centre by that 10 to 15%, by some form of demand management, people, unfortunately, the nature is, they will carry on driving. So that's why the two do equate. We do want to kill the 10 to 15%, but we think, and it's only think, based on all historical facts that we've got, that traffic will increase by about, congestion will increase by about 30% uh, as a result of all the new housing that's uh, being done. Just another thing, just another plug for Andy. Um, we did a, a spider diagram of um, mode of transport. Cycling, 50%, 43%. Top against other comparable towns, the Yorks, the Chesters, the Oxfords of this world. Durham, top. Where was buses? Public transport actually languished the lowest of all comparable towns. We don't use public transport in Cambridge as much as other towns do. I'm not saying what the reason is, I'm just saying that is a fact. That's the usage on public transport. Huh? You owe me a pint afterwards. Right, we're nearly at a quarter past, but can I have a Richard here and then the Strike jumper, sorry. <laughs> and, it's a lovely strike. Oh, and here. And, and that's the last three questions. Oh, yes. Right. Okay, so the current plan in the presentation was for a stakeholder briefing on the 6th of July. Um, so why can that not be um, a, a public briefing? So I think that might be um, something which the um, local liaison forum could have as a resolution. Um, you could make, you could ask that um, it be um, a public briefing, and um, even better than a public briefing would be a formal local government meeting. So we have a, a right of access and a right to report. And even better would be if we had the report a few days or even a week um, before that meeting, so we've got a chance to um, get the councillors to to question uh, ask questions on the uh, board report. Um, thank you. And Uh, another Richard as well, a strike one. Um, my question, sorry, Chris, um, question was really back to your model, which you set out in some quite some detail. Um, and I appreciate that you're constrained looking at Milton Road from one end to another. Um, the detail, presumably, in these models is the boundary condition that you set. So the point made there that, so what happens at the end of Milton Road? In, when you feed back, will it be obvious from your modelling output or your modelling description what constraints you have applied there? Because presumably you haven't applied, applied an unconstrained outflow from the end of Milton Road. And then the second point, having done that, having set what those are, will you be testing that against the similar model that's run for Mitchum's Corner? So that we actually do get some idea that these models have been linked up before final solutions are, are adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this evening I counted 10 cars parked on the verges, double yellows, pavements on Milton Road alone. Yeah. So what is going to be done in the projects to stop this happening? Because it would be a very, very big shame if we had all these lovely verges and then they just turned into dust because we were parking on them all the time. Yes, you mentioned earlier on um, when you were talking about the sections about the potential impact of multiple signal sequences on queuing and I wanted to be assured that you would make sure that you have looked at that carefully to avoid the sort of scenario I know it's outside the remit of this, but that happens in the science park, where actually there are times when it would be quicker to coming coming into town.
to queue jump down to the traffic lights, go into the science park, round the roundabout, back out again <laughs> to get down Milton yeah. Road while you're sitting there waiting outside Taylor Vintner. Yeah. So that's one thing. You need to be aware of what the impact is of side roads and rat running. And the other one is, um, on you, you've said um, that cars coming in along or going out along Milton Road will have priority over side roads, but do, you know our car drivers are not familiar with that kind of constraint, and I'm nervous of the safety aspects of that with cars wanting to come out and looking forward and around the corner and either being in the way of or actually knocking over cyclists. We know we've had fatalities on that road with cars coming across the side roads onto Milton Road and killing cyclists. Okay, so can I take the first one? Can I throw that to you, Jocelyn? That might be something you might want to talk to Lewis about. Is that okay? Absolutely, yes. And we'll um, discuss it. The, step, and the question about the stakeholders' briefing on the 6th of July, whether it should be an uh, or ordinary LLF meeting. So we've taken it on board. So the, the next question I think was about the modelling and what impact do we take at the ends of the model because obviously the constraints there. Just pass that. Just to be clear, the, the Prorax model we've built covers the whole of Milton Road and parts of the network beyond Milton Road. So we can look at the side roads, we can look at the junctions at either end. So the model just doesn't effectively come to a brick wall at the end. The traffic is operating on the network and it goes beyond. Eventually it goes outside of the, the scope of the model, that's well outside of the Milton Road corridor itself. So you know, we, we have the ability to see the impacts not only on Milton Road but on the side roads and at the key junctions on the end. Thanks Richard. The, the other question... Um, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's just that we do have to... Well, oh, you your question, yet. Yet. Well, when I look at the... Uh, when I'm oh, no, 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 waiting for an answer to his question. Oh. Okay, so just, just well, it, it sort of ties in with the, uh, the trees and the verges. Yeah. That is one of the consequences, of course, of people coming in, because people will come in, they'll park up as close as they can, and then walk or even cycle in the rest of the way. Part of the idea is to get them out of the car so they don't even get there. But the answer to your question, the straight answer to your question is, we are looking for a, a controlled parking zone. So that will limit the amount of commuter traffic that can park in the area. It will be more predominantly towards uh, residents. And making sure that where residents, for example, haven't got off-street parking, that we provide off-street parking in adjacent uh, roads. So we, we can try and accommodate everybody. Are they already parked where they're not allowed to anyway? <laughs> yeah, but there's no... Yeah, but there's no well, if there's restrictions there, they'll get ticketed. Well, well, we'll make sure. We will make sure they do. <laughs> it's a good point. We will make sure they do if that's the, if that's the case. And then there was multiple junctions and yeah, multi, multiple junctions. That was the the point I was trying to make on on multiple junctions. That if you get too much delay there, people will start looking to do all sorts of alternative things, and people are very inventive. Um, particularly when they're in cars. So, yes, we will model that and make sure that you know we, we see the impacts of that. And the last thing we want, that's why we're saying there could be an issue with the multiple junctions within the new optimum, that it could cause delays, and those delays could inadvertently um, end up with um, consequences you didn't expect, unintended consequences. Um, so, yes, that is something we look at. Going back to the, the, the final point then, in terms of uh, looking at um, the, the minor roads um, and cycling across, that isn't something that's done in this country, so you're right to raise that. What we're trying to do, and, and hopefully trying to demonstrate to you, is that was something that was suggest, suggested within the resolution, and that's something we are keen to look at. Yes, there is the caveat that it's got to be safe, but I come back to some of my earlier comments that yeah, it's all right as all sat in this room, and you may then all shout at me, but it's all right as all sat in this room. I was once at a meeting where a guy um, slagged us off up hill and down dale about an incident that had occurred at the top of a hill in a village, 
and a kiddie had been knocked down, coming out the front of the bus, not serious, but still knocked down. He then, and, and very verbal at the meeting, he then had the audacity to tell one of my officers that he'd actually been caught for speeding in the village. And uh, you just wonder where people come from at times. So it, it is a, a, a bad culture, but if we can do it, we will look to do it. But safety's got to be paramount. Yeah. So, I mean, my concern was that that might cause loads of ugly signage to stop people. Well, yes, that's what we've got. We do end up with a lot of signage if we're not careful. I mean, that's what we'd have to uh, look very carefully. It would have to be something that we get, have to get dispensation for to actually trial and do. Um, but your point is well made, uh, and it is something we are alive to. But we want to try and accommodate as much as we possibly can within the resolutions and the, the do optimum. Good. That's a good point to end on, do optimum. Um, before we do say thank you very much to, to Chris and... Um... <laughs> before we do say thank you very much, I've instructed that the presentation will be posted on the website tomorrow, so it will be there. I know that there are concerns about the website and finding it, but it will be there to be found on the website. I just remembered also that when I did introductions at the beginning, I should have actually mentioned that um, in addition to Councillor uh, Richards, who is new on the uh, local liaison forum, um, Councillor Machining is new too. She represents King's Hedges, but she is a new representative on the LLF, so we're pleased to have her too. And Councillor Bradnam, I did mention that you're now a county councillor as well. And I should add that Councillor Manning, of course, is the new seat of Chesterton, which combines east and west, basically. But may we say thank you very much to everybody for coming, and thank you to Andy Campbell in particular, because that was very much appreciated that, that you attended. Thank you very much to Chris Tunstall for the presentation and for uh, answering the questions so well. And the questions that were put earlier, we will put to Councillor Herbert so that you will have responses to them. And I'd also like to thank Paul van der Bolt for attending as well and coming so that we can all see that he is the new Milton Road Project Manager. And Richard Preston for coming as well with his um, interventions, uh, constructive interventions. And I see that Neil's here, Neil Poulton. So it's <laughs> lovely to have Neil Poulton, who's from the consultants. So thank you very much, and our very special thanks, particularly to Chris Tunstall. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. There was one question that was asked about the new optimum. Um, that I didn't answer. No, it's not on our website, but it is on the Milton Road Residents Association website. We will put it on our website as well. So thank you for raising that. Yes. Yes. It will.